forward. We are expecting the third wave of hostages uh, and Palestinian prisoners to be released today, perhaps imminently. But we'll remember it this time. Yesterday, we're expecting that. And there was this big hold-up for, for several hours. Just shows really how fragile this truce is. You're absolutely right, Nick. Um, there's lots of complexities behind the scene. And uh, whilst we're hoping the exchange will happen as, as planned. There are lots of um, the stakeholders out there that are, that are somewhat sceptical of that we won't face the same challenges as we did yesterday. Bear in mind, though, that both sides actually are incentivised to make this work, but for very different agendas. From the Israeli perspective, their, their military action after the 7th of October was pretty devastating, but it failed to destroy Hamas and it failed to liberate hostages, whereas the truce actually is liberating uh, hostages and there's going to be increasing political and diplomatic and internal pressure for that process to continue. Um, from a mass perspective, they know they're no match for the Israeli military uh, militarily, um, but they now, for the first time, have a voice, they have influence, and they're starting to in exert control. Uh, meanwhile, Israel is just flexing its muscles, just demonstrating that it is militarily superior, threatening military action if, the, if there's any hiccup. And they released, uh, the IDF released a video of Defence Minister Galani, uh, shown here. Um, we're not entirely sure the date of this, but visiting uh, Gaza, um, briefing the troops. And it's no, um, it's no coincidence this has been released um, during this hostage uh, period, just to show um, militarily where Israel has primacy. Yeah, both sides really playing or, or trying to play hardball. How likely is it this truce will continue? There were some signs of optimism, certainly from Egypt yesterday. W where are we today? Well, there has been talk about this extension of 10 more hostages for every day of the extension of the truce. And actually, both sides probably are incentivised to do that. But the IDF has threatened that there'll be military action the moment the hostage exchange process stops. The challenge is, what does that military action look like? If we look at the map, Israel's been working in the northern part of Gaza, caused devastation. Um, if they are to achieve their military objectives, they have to move south. Uh, phase two, they've always talked about. There's a much higher population density in the south because all of the north has been told to move south. And even the IDF admit that it will be much more difficult uh, militarily um, to actually achieve those objectives. So the next phase, humanitarian aid uh, and the like, Will the hostages continue to be traded? Yes, the numbers will come down, but eventually Hamas will get a small number left, and at that point, I think the real negotiations will start. But time will tell.